In today's video, we're going to uh, show you how to use the Snap-on Blend ID Refrigerant Identifier. Uh, this is one particular model that does uh, R12 and R134A. Uh, newer machines will do uh, newer refrigerants like the 1234YF. Uh, this machine, you can see by the uh, adapters, 134A and R12 are the only two hoses that we have, or the only two adapters we have. So, to use the machine, first thing we want to do is to plug it in. We've got to power it up. And when that happens, it'll go through a series of screens asking you if you want to make any changes from your initial setup. We usually leave it where it's at. Okay? Um, so it'll run through that at first. And if you make no changes, uh, it'll then go on to a calibration. Uh, let me just see where the machine is at right now. It's doing a system warm up and a filter check. So it's a, a pre check before the calibration. It does have a feature that you can print off of this, but we usually don't. We just want to see what is in our uh, system. So that's the whole idea. Why do we use a refrigerant identifier? To see what's in the uh, system before we hook up our recovery recycle machine. And if there's anything in there that could do damage to it, uh, cause it to uh, either fail or be contaminated, we'd rather pick it up here and change out a filter versus having to do um, some very costly maintenance or maybe even repairs to our machine. All right, still doing its warm up. Let's get a little older machine, but uh, very, still very accurate. I'm sure the newer ones still have to do a warm up and a calibration. All right, it says system calibration. You just heard that noise. It's now going through the process of calibration. This takes a few seconds. And after that occurs, if everything's good, we don't have to bend down any air or if there's uh, you know, a filter that's not usable, then it will allow us to hook it to the vehicle. All right, so calibration's done. The next thing we want you to do is to select the system that we have. Is it R12 or R134A? So we'll press A, the button A, because we have 134A. And then we're going to connect our hose. So looking at our fittings here, we take the quick disconnect 134A type, Oops. and uh, let's set this down here. By hand, we'll make the connection to the port, and then we will find our low pressure port. Usually, it'll have a blue uh, cap on it. This one, both caps are black, but remember, this is only going to fit on the low pressure port. We'll unscrew the cap. Squeeze the quick disconnect, lock it into place, and remember to turn the valve in. We look at our machine now. We have pressure on the gauge. It's a low pressure sample. And to start the test, press A. The machine will then sample from the system, looking at what refrigerant it has, and then it will tell us exactly what's in here. It says sampling in progress. And it says green light, we got a pass. There's no R12, there's no R22, no hydrocarbons, 100% R134A, and no air. That's good. If we see anything other than 100% R134A on a system like this, we want to question what's in there and how we're going to deal with it. Now, if it was cross-contaminated with HCs or hydrocarbons, we may have to have a dirty machine to pull that out. We don't want to put it in our good machine. Because remember, recovery cycle, 
only pull out non-condensable gases, it cannot separate contaminated refrigerant. So we have a system here that's good, we can use it, we can uh, service it and whatnot. So when we're done, turn our valve back out and disconnect it. Take off our hose. And I'll put that away then. Unplug our machine. And if we're not ready to hook our uh, ref refrigerant recovery cycle machine up, we'll cap the port again. Only get into the habit of keeping the ports closed unless you have something hooked to it. And that is how to use, that's the, uh, how to use our refrigerant identifier.